Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be covering Neville Goddard's Feeling is the Secret. I'm going to break this down just like I did with the power of awareness so that way everyone can understand exactly what Neville Goddard is saying here and what he's interpreting, the ima how imagination creates reality and how you can create anything you want in your world and the connection between what your feeling states are throughout the day and what you're conscious of and what you're impressing into the subconscious mind. And then the subconscious mind is expressing that into your world and actually creating your reality. So what I'm going to do is cover this and break it down completely. That way you can completely understand how to start changing your life by what you're reacting to like, throughout the day and what you're manifesting throughout the day and what you're falling asleep with, like the feelings you're falling asleep with and how those things are impressing the subconscious mind and then recreating those things to come into your world. And when you can understand all of these things, which I'm gonna break down for you, that way you can understand them completely, is that nothing is impossible to you. Nothing in this world that you want to attain or you want to manifest is impossible for you. And this book that I'm gonna break down is gonna, is gonna show you exactly how this operates, how you can impress the subconscious mind and how to go out through your day and how to, how to react to things, how to not react to things, and then take those things into the drift from your conscious state into the subconscious state and how that is expressed into your 3D world and how you can manipulate your 3D world by doing this and creating the life that you only can dream of having. And at the end of this chapter, I'm going to be giving you an exercise to do based on the information that I'm gonna give you from this chapter. That way you can start using this and start manifesting in your world and start seeing the real-time results of what Neville Goddard is teaching here, because I think that was the only thing that was left out of these chapters and of a lot of Neville Goddard's books, of the exercises to do to actually start performing these acts in your world and start seeing results. Because I think a lot of people read these books and they don't actually use it. They're not using it in an application. They're not actually using these in exercise and really performing and manifesting things in their world. And they just throw the book away and forget all about it a month later. You have to start doing this. So I'm going to give you an exercise at the end of this chapter to start performing these applications in your 3D world so you can start seeing those results. All right, so let's begin with chapter one, law and its operation. The world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. Consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. And as we know, we've covered this before, the world that you're living in right now is a hologram. It's a high-tech simulated game that's being projected from within you because you have consciousness which cannot be divided. But the dual nature of consciousness is that there's a conscious part and then there's a subconscious part, which we're gonna get into much later, but the world and all within it is man's conditioned consciousness objectified. So whatever's going on within you is going to be projected outward into the screen of space. And that's right here. The consciousness is the cause as well as the substance of the entire world. So the entire world you're living in is being projected from inside of you. There is no world that is outside of you. Everything is within you. So it's being projected outwardly, okay? So, so it is to consciousness that we must turn if we would discover the secret of creation, okay? Consciousness, which is within you. So you must go within yourself to discover the secret of creation because everything is created within you and then projected out into your world. So nothing can be changed or affected by trying to manipulate your world outside. So you cannot change anything in with the projection until you first change it within you. You change you from within. Because that's the secret of creation. The secret of creation is not to change things on the outside without first changing them on the inside because the world is you projected out onto the screen of space. Okay, so knowledge of the law of consciousness and the method of operating this law will enable you to accomplish all you desire in life. So once you figure this out and understand that, which I'm going to give you an exercise to help you with all this, you will understand and be able to accomplish anything that you want to do in life or anything you want to create in life. But most people, we're not taught these things 
in school. I mean, when we went to school, like in elementary school and high school and even college, they're not, you're not taught these things that everything is contained within you and projected out. And that's why it's so important that we cover these topics in detail now. Okay, so armed with the working knowledge of this law, you can build and maintain an ideal world. Consciousness is the one and only reality, not figuratively, but actually. This reality may, for the sake of clarity, be likened unto a stream, which is divided into two parts, the conscious and the subconscious. In order to intelligently operate the law of consciousness, it is necessary to understand the relationship between the conscious and the subconscious. All right, so the conscious is personal and selective. The subconscious is impersonal and non-selective. The conscious is the realm of effect. The subconscious is the realm of cause. These two aspects are the male and female divisions of consciousness. The conscious is male. The subconscious is female. Okay, so during the day when you're conscious, you can be personal and selective of what you believe to be true. When you take conscious control of what you're receiving and what you see and the feelings that you're taking in throughout the day by the, the events that happen to you during the day. But the subconscious is non-selective and impersonal. It doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to understand what's true, what's false. The only thing it knows is what you're telling it from the things that you've been, you've been impressed with throughout the day, being personal and selective with your consciousness. So whatever you're consenting to be true of your world during the day, when you go to sleep at night, that's when you impress the subconscious with all of those feelings and everything that happened to you. And then those things are recreated into your world later. Like if you were to make, like you found a new job, all these great things are happening to you during the day and you're, you're just going through those motions and accepting those things as being true, all these great things happening to you. And then you go to sleep at night and you impress the subconscious mind with all these great things happening. Then the subconscious mind is going to feel that it's going it, to, and it doesn't have any way out of that. It, it is impersonal and non-selective. It only knows what you tell it. So then it's going to recreate really good things tomorrow to happen. And then for the next week and months, for the rest of your life, if you continue with those feeling states being personal and selective throughout the day while you're conscious. So the subconscious doesn't know anything besides the feelings that you have and the feelings that you take in throughout the day and what you impress it with your and consent to be true whatever you consent to be true throughout throughout the day is what you're telling the subconscious mind and it's then it's going to develop that and then create that into your following days as you go all right so that's the difference between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind but neville goddard gets into a little more detail here as well okay so the conscious generates ideas and impresses these ideas on the subconscious. The subconscious receives ideas and gives form and expression to them. By this law, first conceiving an idea and then impressing the idea conceived on the subconscious, all things evolve out of, the, out of consciousness. And without this sequence, there is not anything made that is made. That is the secret, uh, that, is, that is the way that creation happens. Everything that is the conscious to the subconscious. What you're conscious of and being selective during the day, picking your fruit, your seeds for your garden, and then going to sleep and impressing those ideas and feelings with the subconscious. And then those things are created into consciousness itself those things are going to evolve into your world and that's the world that you're going to be living, whatever you're selecting, whatever seed you're selecting, and then going to sleep and impressing the subconscious mind with that happening to you, then that's what's going to happen to you and the subconscious mind is going to produce those results in your world. Okay, so the conscious impresses the subconscious while the subconscious expresses all that is impressed upon it. So this is good. I like the language here. So the conscious impresses the subconscious while the subconscious expresses all that is impressed upon it so whatever you impress into the subconscious the subconscious is going to express what you're impressing upon it into your 3d world so the subconscious is not, does not originate ideas the subconscious does not originate its own ideas it only knows what you tell it through your feelings but it accepts as true those which the conscious mind feels to be true and in a way known only to itself 
objectifies the accepted ideas. So whatever ideas and feelings that you have and impress the subconscious mind with these things being real that are happening to you, it is, it's going to accept, accept those ideas and then objectify them and create them into consciousness, into your world. So you're going to see those things start happening. And it doesn't matter what they are. Whatever you consent to be believe as true, whatever you can imagine, whatever you can feel is true in your world and impress that in the subconscious mind, it's going to be created into your 3D world. And remember, this also works for negative things. So if there's bad things going on in your life and you're being emotionally charged about those negative things in your life, remember that you are impressing those bad things that are happening, those negative things, those emotions. You're impressing those things into the subconscious mind and it's impersonal. It doesn't know the difference. So when you're telling it these, these things, these bad things are happening, it's like it doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know, it is not trying to help you. It's not trying to hurt you. It just, just knows what you're telling it through these feeling states. Then it reproduces that in your world tomorrow. So be very careful of your moods because there's an unbroken connection between the things, the feelings that you have and the subconscious mind and, the, and your world and what's going to be created tomorrow. So be very careful with that. Okay, so therefore, through the, his power to imagine, your power to imagine, and feel his freedom to choose the idea you will entertain, man has control over creation. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings. And this is a lot to do with the exercise I'm going to give you right here. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas, because this is the key here. You need to have control of the subconscious. The subconscious is creating things into your world, and you have to get this in your mind. You have to know this. You have to feel this. You have to accept this as true, because it is. Your world right now is the way that it is because of the things that you've impressed in the subconscious mind through your ideas and feelings throughout the day. And all those things are being created into your world. So if your world's the way that it is now, or is something going on you don't like, it's because something you have done. It's some emotion, some feeling that you've had and accepted to be true in your world. And now it's just being recreated every day because you're impressing that feeling, that, that idea of it being real to the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is then creating it for tomorrow. And it keeps recreating this over and over and over until you change it. And that's what we're doing now. And I'm going to teach you. I'm going to give you an exercise to start changing it because this is very important. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings when you're in your conscious state throughout the day. So you must take control of your ideas and your feelings. What are your ideas and what are you becoming emotional, um, emotionally charged about throughout the day? We have to change those things and then your world will change. You can impress, you can impress the subconscious mind with anything that you want. And that's why Neville Goddard went into, you know, visualizing before you go to sleep at night. Because no matter what happened to you through the day, no matter all the bad things that you become emotionally charged about, you can change that right before you go to sleep by visualizing a different feeling state. That everything happened everything was great that happened to you all day long and you create this vision in your mind and you feel it and you make it real and then you live in this scene and you loop this movie that you've created about your day that didn't really happen but you're changing it and then you take this feeling and you become emotionally charged about these great things happening to you you just you do, you just won a million dollars you just got a new job you just got this house you're in this great relationship you can run your mind through all these different scenarios and feel it and then impress the subconscious mind as you go to sleep, impress it, and then the subconscious mind will express that new life for you. That's how easy this is, but this is where it comes in. Control of the subconscious is accomplished through control of your ideas and feelings, and that's what we're gonna cover. That's what we're gonna learn how to do, is control our ideas and feelings throughout the day and before we go to sleep at night, so we're very careful about what we're impressing the subconscious mind with. Okay, so the mechanism of creation is hidden in the very depth of the subconscious, the female aspect or womb of creation. The subconscious transcends reason and is independent of induction. It contemplates a feeling as a fact existing within itself and on this assumption proceeds to give expression to it. 
The creative process begins with an idea and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and ends in a volition to act. Okay, so this is very important. The creative process begins with an idea or a feeling and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and it ends in a volition to act. So when you impress the subconscious mind, the, the subconscious mind will then express even a new version of you because your body is also part of the subconscious. So you're impressing yourself with a new version of yourself to be expressed the following day, which will end in a volition to act intuitively. Because when you're in alignment, when you have impressed the subconscious mind with a new version of yourself or something that you want, you will, you will then be in alignment to act. And when you're in alignment with the frequency or the vibrations or the feeling states of the thing already sought as, as, as you already having it, then you'll be under compulsion to act and to get that thing. And it'll be like effortless at that point because you're in alignment with this new version of yourself. Okay, so ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. Ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. No idea can be impressed on the subconscious until it is felt. No idea can be impressed on the subconscious mind until it is felt. But once felt, be it good, bad, or indifferent, it must be expressed. So any feeling, doesn't matter if it's good, bad, indifferent, it doesn't matter. The subconscious mind is impersonal like we just went over. It's non-selective. It doesn't know the difference all it knows is you, the feelings that you have. Are they good? Are they bad? Are you impressing poverty or are you impressing prosperity or abundance? Which one is it? Because the subconscious mind doesn't know the difference, whatever you're feeling. Say your day is poverty stricken. How about change it before you go to sleep at night? Imagine something completely different. Your day was completely different. You were given this. You got a new job. You actually had all this money coming into you. The relationships are really great. You never really had all these arguments. You never really had all these problems. You create a new life before you go to sleep that day. Revise it. Create a new scene. Create a new life before you go to sleep. And then live in that moment. And then impress the subconscious mind with that with that new feeling state because the subconscious mind's impersonal. It's only going to give you what it, what it feels. What you impress it with is going to express that. And feeling is the one and only medium through which ideas are conveyed to the subconscious. So therefore, the man who does not control his feeling may easily impress the subconscious with undesirable states. By control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling, but rather the disciplining of self to imagine and entertain only such feeling as contributes to your happiness. So be very careful about what you're impressing, this, that feeling state that you're in. Neville Goddard covers this a lot. Do not go to sleep. Do not go to bed with any anger, any jealousy, any fear, any, any ideas of poverty, anything like this. Do not sleep. Do not impress the subconscious mind with those things at least attempt to change them before you go to sleep at night. Create something new. Create a happy feeling. Create an entirely new day or a new feeling and a new emotion before you go to sleep. And by control of feeling is not meant restraint or suppression of your feeling. So when he says this, do not fight your thoughts. Do not fight your feelings. Just control the feelings by disciplining yourself to imagine and entertain only such feelings as contributes to your happiness. Do not fight them because that will, if you're fighting your feelings, if you're getting upset about an upset feeling, then you're creating more upset circumstances and going to impress the subconscious mind with even more, more bad things to come to you in your world. So do not fight or restrain or suppress your feelings. Create new ones. Discipline yourself to imagine and entertain only such feelings that contribute to your happiness. Control of your feeling is all important to a full and happy life. Never entertain an undesirable feeling, nor think sympathetically about a wrong in any shape or form. So if, you're, if you notice that your mind is going to that as you're falling asleep at night, that it's going back you know, five years or 10 years or six months ago where you did something you don't feel good about, you know, you did to somebody else, do not 
entertain that feeling, create something new, revise it. You could even go into revision, change that scene in your mind, you know, to whatever it was that is it that is making you feel this way. Change that scene and recreate something new. Create it the way that you wanted it to go, something that would fulfill you, something that would show that you that you didn't do this wrongdoing or whatever it was. Revise that and then replay that over and over again until you take on this new feeling state of the revised scene until you take on this completely new feeling state and emotion and now you've moved past that and now the subconscious mind is going to move past that and express something new for you tomorrow once you get through that with revision and revision can be a very powerful tool for this okay so do not dwell on the imperfections of yourself or others so if there's any imperfections within you do not dwell on them as you go to sleep especially with other people as well Anyone that's done anything, any harm to you, do not dwell on that as you're falling asleep with that anger. Do not fall asleep. Do not dwell on that as you're falling asleep or even throughout the day. That is not dwelling on the imperfections of yourself or others does not do anything for you unless you're using that as fuel to grow in some way. Like sometimes I'll do that with myself. I'll be, you know, I will dwell on some imperfections of my body, but I will put that into action, you know, throughout the day by getting into the gym more or eating more, eating healthier. You know, I'll start to make improvements in my life. I'm not really dwelling on the imperfections. I'm actually in seeing the imperfections and improving those things. So that's something that you can use as fuel to grow and to develop yourself even further, but don't don't just dwell on them and then this lay there there's nothing i can do to change that you know because you can you can use that you know dwelling on those imperfections just for a moment but then as you make the changes you know throughout the 3d world like when i see imperfections i'll I, and there's something that i can actually change you know there's a difference between the two you know i'm dwelling on these imperfections but i can change them and i'm using them to grow so by the end of the night you know i've made some improvements with that so i'm impressing the subconscious mind with this version of myself that uses these things for growth. And then I'm growing and I'm getting better, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting healthier, I'm doing all of these things that I'm impressing the subconscious mind with this new version or identity. And then I'm then the, the following day, I'm led to things like healthier foods coming in or more opportunities to work out or to grow my to grow even further, to make more money, to develop even further. So but if the things that you're dwelling upon, these imperfections are things that you can't change, like like in yourself or other people, do not dwell on those things unless there's something you can do to actually get to accomplish that, to actually fix that, to repair that. If not, move on to something else, something that you can you can fix, something you, you can change, then start growing from those things. But if it's something you, you, that you can't help or change at all, do not dwell on that at all. You, it's not going to help you in any which way. So don't focus your attention on those things. And it's just like what Neville Goddard says right here. To do those things is to impress the subconscious mind with those limitations. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary or automatic. Okay, so every feeling makes a subconscious impression. And unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature, it must be expressed. Okay, so every feeling makes a subconscious impression. So whatever powerful feeling you have is going to be impressed into the subconscious unless it is counteracted by a more powerful feeling of an opposite nature. So the dominant of two feelings is the one that's going to be expressed. Neville Goddard gives some examples here that are pretty good. So if you say, I am healthy, um, that is much str a stronger feeling than, than I will be healthy. I am healthy now is a much stronger feeling to impress the subconscious mind than to say, I will be healthy tomorrow. Or to feel I will be is to confess that you are not. So I am is stronger than I am not. Okay, so what you feel you are, all what you feel you are, always dominates what you feel you would like to be. So therefore, to be realized, the wish must be felt as a state that is, rather than a state that is not. So never say when you're affirming, say never say I will be or. You never say, I, I will be this tomorrow or I will be this next week. Always say, I am this 
right now. So that's the feeling you want to have as you're impressing the subconscious mind is I am this right now. And that's the feeling that, you know, impresses the subconscious mind to actually create that into your world tomorrow is that feeling. All right. So sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Be careful of your moods and feelings for, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Be careful of your moods and your feelings. There is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Your body is an emotional filter and bears the unmistakable marks of your prevalent emotions. Emotional disturbances, especially suppressed emotions, are the causes of all disease. Suppressed emotions are the causes of all disease. To feel intensely about a wrong without voicing or expressing that feeling is the beginning of disease in both body and environment. So when you do these things, when you, when you feel intensely about a wrong without actually expressing that feeling, it will cause disease in your environment as well as your body. Not just you, but, your, but your, the world that you're living in. You're causing disease in your world that you're going to be living in, not only your body. So do not entertain the feeling of regret or failure for frustration or detachment from your objective results in disease. Do not entertain in the feelings of regret or failure. And if you're stuck on these, if you need to voice these or express these feelings, revising the scene is a very powerful way to, to overcome these things. Whatever this is, whatever these things that you feel intensely about, these wrongs that you did, revise the scene, change it. Change your actions, change somebody else's actions, and then replay that in your mind. And that will this is the equivalent to expressing something different. So then you're creating something different to be objectified in your world because you're confirming this change with the subconscious and feeling that to be to be real now in your world. So now you're 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 causing the disease to no longer exist in your environment and in your body. So to think feelingly only of the state you desire to realize. Okay, think feelingly only of the state you desire to realize. So any feelings you have. So notice that throughout the day, whatever feelings you have throughout the day when they're bad, is that the state that you desire to realize? Ask yourself that question. Is this the desired um, state or the life that I want to live? I want to, do I want to feel this? Is this helping me? Is this contributing to my success or happiness? And if it isn't, then you need to change that. Revise it or start thinking of something positive, something you can change. So feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that, convic that conviction is the way of all seeming miracles. All changes of expression are brought about through a change of feeling. A change of feeling is a change of destiny. All creation occurs in the domain of the subconscious. What you must acquire then is a reflective control of the operation of the subconscious. That is control of your ideas and feelings when you're conscious. So that's how, that's how you change this. You must acquire this. A reflective control of the operation of the subconscious comes from controlling your ideas and feelings while you're awake. So you control your ideas and everything you consent to be true throughout the day. Then you're taking control of the operation of the subconscious mind and taking control of your future by changing your feelings and changing your ideas. And you can even do this. You start doing this throughout the day start changing them and stop reacting to these negative things that are going on. And if you do catch yourself reacting, you always have the chance before you go to sleep at night to revise those scenes or change that or create a new scene for tomorrow. Visualize something for next week to happen to you. Something great is happening and fall asleep with that new feeling and controlling that idea and that feeling as you drift to sleep and pressing the subconscious mind with something completely different. All right. So Chance or accident is not responsible for the things that happen to you. Chance or accident, there's no such thing as a chance or accident in your life. Those things are not responsible for the things that happen to you. Nor is predestined fate the author of your fortune or your misfortune. Your subconscious impressions determine the condition of your world. So everything that you, you are in total control. Nothing happens to you because of somebody else. 
There are no chances. There are there is no accident. There are no accidents or coincidences in your life. Everything is controlled through everything you consent to be true in your world, your feelings and ideas, everything that you are emotionally absorbed about through, throughout the day, and then you fall asleep with those feelings and ideas. That's what creates your world. What you fall asleep with feeling and ideas and everything you consent to be true in your world is what you are impressing into the subconscious mind. It's going to be created into your world tomorrow. So you must be selective, very, very selective because your subconscious impressions determine the conditions of your world. The subconscious is not selective. It is impersonal and no respecter of persons. Acts 1034 Romans 211. The subconscious is not concerned with the truth or falsity of your feelings. It always accepts as true that which you feel to be true. Feeling is the ascent of the subconscious to the truth of that which is declared to be true. Because of this quality of the subconscious, there is nothing impossible to man. There's nothing impossible to you. Because of this connection between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, there is nothing impossible for you to create. Whatever you can consent to be true, however big, however small, if you can accomplish that, if you can retain that feeling state of something happening to you or something happening in your world and impressing the subconscious mind with that, it's going to happen. There's nothing impossible to you. So whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel is true, the subconscious can and must objectify. Your feelings create the pattern from which your world is fashioned and a change of feeling is a change of pattern of your life. So the subconscious never fails to express that which has been impressed upon it. The moment it receives an impression, it begins to work out the ways of its expression. It accepts the feeling impressed upon it. Your feeling as a fact existing within itself and immediately sets about to produce in the outer or objective world the exact likeness of that feeling. The subconscious never alters the accepted beliefs of man. It outpictures them to the last detail whether or not they are beneficial to you. So to impress the subconscious with the desirable state, you must assume the feeling that would be yours had you already really realized your wish. In defining your objective, you must be concerned only with the objective itself. The manner of expression or the difficulties involved are not to be considered by you. To think feelingly on any state impresses it on the subconscious. Therefore, if you dwell on difficulties, barriers, or delay, the subconscious by its very non-selective nature accepts the feeling of difficulties and obstacles as your request and proceeds to produce them in your outer world. So this is what is meant by do not focus on how you're going to get it, how it's going to come, why it's going to come. You don't focus your attention on these things. You focus on the feeling that it is already completed. You impress the subconscious mind with the feeling you assume the feeling that would be yours had you already realized your wish and you don't worry about the barriers or anything that's in the way of you getting that. You don't worry about delay or how long it's going to come or the difficulties that are going to come in order to get that. You don't focus on those things because if you do, the non-selective nature of the subconscious mind will accept that feeling of difficulty and obstacles as your request and it'll proceed to produce more obstacles, more delays, more barriers in your outer world. The subconscious is the womb of creation. It receives the idea unto itself through the feelings of man. It never changes the idea received, but always gives it form. Hence, the subconscious outpictures the idea in the image and likeness of the feeling received. To feel a state as hopeless or impossible is to impress the subconscious with the idea of failure. So if you ever think something is hopeless or impossible, you are impressing the subconscious mind with failure. And it's going to reproduce that hopelessness or that impossibility. So be very careful of what you're impressing because anything is, anything is possible to you. There is nothing that is hopeless. You can't attain anything by understanding what this chapter is covering here and what these secrets are. Understand this is very, very clear. Although the subconscious faithfully serves man, it must not be inferred that the relation is that of a servant to a master as, the ancient, as it was anciently received. 
The ancient prophets called it the slave and the servant of man. St. Paul personified it as a woman and said the woman should be subject to man in everything. But this is symbolic, okay? So Ephesians 5.24, also Corinthians 14.34, Ephesians 5.22, Colossians 3.18, 1 Peter 3.1. The subconscious does serve man and faithfully gives form to his feelings. However, the subconscious has a distinct distaste for compulsion and responds to persuasion rather than to command. So you can't just command your subconscious to give you something because when you're commanding it, you're telling it that you don't have it. You have to persuade it by impressing it with the feeling that you already have it. So you must persuade the subconscious mind rather than force or command the subconscious mind to do something. You, don't, you can't tell the subconscious mind something. You have to trick it you have to trick it to believe that you already have something. That's the trick here. You persuade the subconscious mind with a feeling that you already have it, that you already have something. So you're no longer putting it, you're, never, you're no longer commanding the subconscious mind to give you something. You're now persuading it. You're tricking it to believe you have it already. So this resembles the beloved wife more than the servant. Okay, so the husband is head of the wife, which is, is symbolic. So Ephesians 5.23 may not be the true, the true of man and woman in their earthly relationship, but it is true of, this, of the conscious and the subconscious or the male and female aspects of consciousness. The mystery to which Paul referred when he wrote, this is a great mystery. 5.32, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. 5.28, and they too shall be one flesh chapter 5 verse 31 is simply the mystery of consciousness consciousness is really one and undivided but the for creation's sake it appears to be divided into two so the conscious or male aspect truly is the head and dominates the subconscious or subjective which is fe the female aspect that is because you, when you're conscious during the day, you are accepting what is true of your world, like the feelings. You're absorbing those feelings and ideas, you know, throughout the day. So you are, you're taking all of those feelings, which you have control over, which is impressing into the subconscious because the subconscious is impersonal. So it is under control by the conscious mind, which you have control over. So whatever you're feeling, you're, you know, you're consenting to be true. You're, you're impressing those things into the subconscious. Then the subconscious is expressing those things into your world based on the, the way that you feel and the things you're consenting to be true in your world. So be very careful of this. And you are in control of these things. So remember that. You are in control of what you're accepting to be true in your world and all the feelings and everything you're becoming emotional about. And that, those are the things that are recreating in your world as you go day, day to day. But you can change that at any time. But understand this, though. The conscious or male aspect truly is the head and dominates the subconscious because the subconscious is impersonal and only knows what you tell, you're telling it through your feeling states. So be very conscious and control of that, of how you're operating that. Okay, so however, this leadership is not that, that of the tyrant, but of the lover. So by assuming the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your objective, the subconscious is moved to build the exact likeness of your assumption. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of their reality. Your desires are not subconsciously accepted until you assume the feeling of the reality, of their reality, for only through the feeling is an idea subconsciously accepted and only through this subconscious acceptance is it ever expressed through the subconscious it is easier to ascribe your feelings to events in the world than to admit that the conditions of your of the world reflect your feeling however it is eternally true that the outside mirrors the inside right here everything is within you being projected outwardly so it is eternally true that the outside the outside world the 3d world mirrors you from within the inside of you is pushed out you the world is you pushed out it is eternally true that the outside mirrors the inside as within so without as above so below as below so above as within so without as without so within and right here john chapter 3 27 a man can receive nothing a person can receive nothing unless it is given to him from heaven. 
and the kingdom of heaven is within you. That's what the Bible was telling us. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Luke 17, 21, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And you can receive nothing unless it is given from heaven inside of you. Okay, the kingdom of heaven is within you and you can receive nothing unless it comes from within you. Nothing comes from without. All things come from within you. Nothing comes from without. All things come from within, from the subconscious. It is impossible for you to see other than the contents of your own consciousness. Your world in its every detail is your consciousness objectified. Objective states bear witness of subconscious impressions. A change of impression results in a change of expression. The subconscious accepts as true that which you feel as true. And because creation is the result of, the, of subconscious impressions, you by your feeling determine creation. You by your feelings determine your life, your creation, your 3D world. You are already that which you want to be. And your refusal to believe this is the only reason you do not see it. But understanding this knowledge... You are already that which you want to be right now. But once you understand this, you will now make the changes you need to, to see this. You will now be able to see why your world is the way that it is. But before this, your refusal to believe this is the only reason you didn't see it. But now that you understand this, now you know why your world is the way that it is. To seek on the outside for that which you do not feel you are is to seek in vain. For we never find that which we want. We only find that which we are. To seek on the outside is to seek in vain. This kind of goes back to manifesting in vain here, okay? Because you could never find, you're never going to find anything that's going to be sustainable that you want in life. Because once you get it, you're no longer going to want it. Like you're not going to feel fulfilled once you get it. You only find that which you are. And when you are connected, then you're in alignment, with the thing, once you become it and change your concept of yourself, you are now the thing being expressed into your 3D world. And you're no longer seeking in vain. You're no longer manifesting in vain. You're no longer seeking on the outside. You're looking within yourself and changing the version of yourself. Then everything, then you're in alignment with that action, with getting it, with everything coming to you. You're no longer seeking in vain. So in short, you express and have only that which you are conscious of being or possessing. To him that hath, it is given. Matthew 13, 12, 25, 29, Mark 4, 25, Luke 8, 18, 19, and 26. Denying the evidence of the senses and appropriating the feeling of the wish fulfilled is the way to the realization of your desire. Mastery of self-control of your thoughts and feelings is your highest achievement however until perfect self-control is attained so that in spite of appearances you feel all that you want to feel use sleep and prayer to aid you in realizing your desired states these are the two gateways into the subconscious all right so let's go ahead and jump into this this is chapter two sleep feeling is a secret by neville goddard Sleep, the life that occupies one third of our stay on earth, is the natural door into the subconscious. So it is with sleep that we are now concerned. The conscious two thirds of our life on earth is measured by the degree of attention we give sleep. Our understanding of and delight in what sleep has to bestow will cause us night after night to set out for it as though we were keeping an appointment with a lover. And once you understand the importance of impressing the subconscious mind and understanding that your feelings are creating your life based on what you fall asleep with and the impressions that you make, then you will look and have a close relationship with sleep. You'll start looking at it completely different. Like my grandfather used to do that. He used to prepare hours ahead of time and have this huge smile on his face and he's so happy to be meeting his subconscious lover having that appointment with the subconscious while he's going to sleep like he's looking forward to it he's getting happy he's getting in this good feeling 
as he's about to go to sleep and creating that and then that dovetails and then creates great things to come into your life the following day then he wakes up you know happy he would always wake up happy go to sleep happy and continue to manifest great things in his life just doing these things not even visualizing anything not affirming anything just falling asleep with gratitude and appreciation meeting your subconscious lover with gratitude and appreciation for that and having that relationship as if the subconscious was your lover you know you're setting that appointment with the, your lover and i love how the bible in job 33 was pointing this out to us in a dream in a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumbering upon the bed then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instructions as job 33 it is in sleep and in prayer a state akin to sleep that man enters the subconscious to make his impressions and receive his instructions in these states the conscious and subconscious are creatively joined the male and female become one flesh sleep is the time when the male or conscious mind turns from the world of sense to seek its lover or subconscious self so sleep is the time where you make your impressions and the subconscious receives your instructions basically from everything that you've gathered throughout the day all the feelings all the ideas everything you believe and consent to be true in your world you're impressing that into the subconscious and giving those instructions to the subconscious when you when the male and female aspects become one when the conscious and the subconscious become one flesh and the subconscious unlike the woman of the world who marries her husband to change him has no desire to change the conscious waking state but loves it as it is and faithfully reproduces it its likeness in the outer world of form so the subconscious is not trying to it, it's impersonal it's not trying to change you in any way it's not trying to it, ha, it doesn't have that power to do that the only power it has is to is to receive your instructions when you fall asleep and become one flesh with it so that's like all the information and data that is collected throughout your day is all being led to that moment when you drift into unconsciousness into the subconscious into the drift the state akin to sleep and then you drift and connect and make one flesh with the subconscious and then those ideas and everything is then expressed and creates your world the world that you're going to wake up to the next day and i love the language of this that neville goddard used right here the conditions and events of your life are your children formed from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep they are made in the image and likeness of your innermost feeling that they may reveal you to yourself so you can look at this when you connect to the, your subconscious lover it's like impregnating your children to be born into your world like you're creating children impregnating the subconscious mind to create children that are going to be born into your world and expressed into your world and grow into your environment so the conditions and events of your life are your children being created from the molds of your subconscious impressions in sleep just like it was stated here in matthew 6 10 and luke 11 2 as in heaven so on earth as in the subconscious so on earth so whatever you're impressing into the subconscious in sleep is going to be expressed on earth for you the following day the following weeks the following years so whatever you have in consciousness as you go to sleep is the measure of your expression in the waking two-thirds of your life on earth so nothing stops you from realizing your objective except your failure to feel that you are already that which you wish to be or that you are already in possession of the thing sought or the thing that you want your subconscious gives form to your desires only when you feel your wish fulfilled your subconscious gives form to your desires only when you feel your wish fulfilled that means your ideal or whatever you're searching for or whatever you want to be do or have you have to feel as if that's already happened it's in the past it's already it's already happened now you've now you already have those things and what are you going to do after that 
And that is when you're in your state of the wish or the feeling of the wish fulfilled and you impress that in sleep. And that's why we're covering this chapter, sleep and how important sleep is with your subconscious lover and making these impressions. And the unconsciousness of sleep is the normal state of the subconscious. So the subconscious lives in a state of sleep. That's its normal state. It doesn't take on an identity or a concept of itself. It's impersonal and non-selective. So because all these things come from within yourself and your conception of yourself determines that which comes. So you should always feel the wish fulfilled before you drop off to sleep. So no matter what's going on in your life or how bad your day actually was, you need to go into meditation. You need to change those things, whether you're using revision, affirmations, doing a gratitude list, noticing all the good things in your life and just changing your feeling states. Like if you're not feeling good, if there's all these things that you notice your mind is attached to right before you go to sleep and you're upset, don't go to sleep in that state. Change it, but do it in a playful way. Don't don't try to force yourself to not feel like, you know, not to feel, you know, pissed off or upset or fearful or jealous or whatever it is. Just change that by going into meditation and observing your thoughts and then start noticing all the good things. Start start shifting your mind to start seeing all the things that you have in your life rather than the things that you don't have and not looking at the things that went bad today, but start noticing the things that went good today or, or revise some of the bad things that, that happened in your day and, and change them. Create a, a short movie clip in your mind where they actually went a different way. You know, if you had something that didn't go the way that you wanted it to, change it, revise it, change it. And that'll change your inner dialogue. Your inner talking will change and your mood will change from that. And you'll be in, and you fall asleep with this new mood this new good feeling mood and impressing the subconscious mind with that, with a new feeling of a revised version of your day. And this is very important right here. You never draw out of the deep of yourself that which you want. You always draw out of the deep that which you are, which is your conception of yourself. And you are that which you feel yourself to be as well as that which you feel as true of others. All right, so this part is really important. I want to break this down. There's three different parts here. Okay, so you never draw out of the deep of yourself that which you want. Because if you're wanting something, it's, that's you're demonstrating a lack of something when you impress the subconscious mind. So you're telling the subconscious mind that you don't have this thing. You're not in your wish fulfilled at that point. Because you always draw out of the deep or the subconscious what you are. Like your concept of yourself. When you're being something... Then you're connected, you're, al you're aligned with the thing now that you want as already having it. When you change your concept of yourself, that is the person that has these things and you have this identity of now being in alignment with these things, then you'll have them. And for the third part here, which may be the most important, I think a lot of people are confused about where Neville Goddard says here that you also draw out of the subconscious that which you feel as true of others. So your world is you pushed out, okay? But in this regard, a lot of people get confused because I recently came across someone that I was coaching and they had someone do something very cruel to them. And they didn't understand why because they're like, isn't the world me pushed out? I would never do that to someone, so why is that happening to me? And I explained to them that this is not how this works. The world is you pushed out and that's based on your beliefs. This is based on your beliefs of the people in your world. Like what Neville Goddard says here, to be as well as that which you feel as true of others. So it may be something that's totally different. You just believe these things to be true of your world. And that's why these things are happening, because you believe they can happen in your world. So the world is you pushed out does not mean that everyone in your world is going to be like you. It's going to be all based on your beliefs of everyone in your world and based on your conception of yourself and who you are, who is your identity when you actually impress the subconscious mind. That's what your world is going to, that's what your environment is going to be based on. And I wanted to point this out because Neville Goddard talks about this right here, which you feel as true of others. 
is based on your beliefs of others in your world. So if you believe you live in a chaotic, horrible world, everyone's a scammer, then that's the world you're going to be living in. But sometimes these beliefs can be very deep seated and you have to try to overcome them with different revision tactics. There's a lot of there's a lot of different exercises you can do to start doing these, but you need to pinpoint the the ones that are causing it. Like you can go back into your past and try to find out, you know, if where you got these beliefs from, where the where they originated from. What these beliefs that you have, was it from a movie or was it something that happened to you? And once you determine where they originated, you can go back and revise the scene, like change it. Like if you got scammed or ripped off or someone did something cruel to you, you can go back and change that scene, revise it and create like a 10 second movie clip and change the way it happened. And that'll that'll impress the subconscious mind with how you what you consent to be true of others in your world. And then you'll you'll shift to a world where now your beliefs have changed towards other people and you'll start attracting different people into your world that are not this way, these cruel. So if somebody's doing something cruel to you, it's because it's based on your beliefs of those people. But it's not based on who you are. Like if people are doing cruel things to you, don't ask yourself that question. Well, I'm not this way. Am I attracting people that are just like me? It doesn't work like that. It works based on your beliefs, what you believe to be true of everyone else in your world, of others in your world. What do you believe about your world? So that's everything that's creating your environment or your world right now is what you're what you're falling asleep with with that your concept of yourself and what you believe and consent to be true of your world and everyone in it. All right, so here's where Neville continues about assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Okay, so to be realized then, the wish must be resolved into the feeling of being or having or witnessing the state sought. This is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled, the feeling which comes in response to the question, how would I feel were my wish realized right now? How would I feel were my wish real? This is a really good way to, to create a feeling state. Is it by asking yourself this question? A lot of my meditations, I have questions like this as you're falling asleep. How would you feel were your wish realized? And you can get really specific with these things. Get very specific about these questions and then create a feeling state. Ask yourself multiple times. And then, then meditate on the feeling. Capture the feeling. Hold that feeling. And, you know, effortlessly, of course. And then once you create that feeling, then you impress the subconscious mind when it becomes habitual. Like you build that momentum with that feeling. And this is the feeling which should monopolize and immobilize your attention as you relax into sleep. You must be in the consciousness of being or having that which you want to be or to have before you drop off to sleep. Once asleep, you have no freedom of choice. Your entire slumber is dominated by your last waking concept of self. And this is really important right here because once you drift, once you drift into the unconsciousness, in, into unconsciousness, into the subconscious, you no longer have control now now you're now you you become one flesh with the subconscious so now you're in a sleep-like state where you're no longer in control of your feelings but the last feeling that you had is going to dominate your feeling state while you're unconscious it's going to change your dreams your feeling states everything so the subconscious is then developing all these this feeling state now that you have connected and and impressed the subconscious mind with and then, then it's going to be demonstrated, then expressed, you know, when you wake up the following day, your environment can drastically change, like immediately. So it follows, therefore, that you should always assume the feeling of accomplishment and satisfaction before you go to sleep. Just like it was stated in Psalms 95 two, come before me with singing and thanksgiving, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, Psalms 104. Your mood prior to sleep defines your state of consciousness as you enter into the presence of your everlasting lover, the subconscious. The subconscious or she sees you exactly as you feel yourself to be. If as you prepare for sleep, you assume and maintain the consciousness of success by feeling I am successful, you must be successful. 
Lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body. Feel as you would were you in possession of your wish and quietly relax into unconsciousness. Quietly relax into unconsciousness as you feel yourself in possession of your wish as an accomplished fact. He that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. Psalms 121.4 Nevertheless, he giveth his beloved sleep. Psalms 127.2 The subconscious never sleeps. Sleep is the door through which the conscious waking mind passes to be creatively joined to the subconscious. Sleep conceals the creative act while the objective world reveals it. In sleep, man impresses the subconscious with his conception of himself. What more beautiful description of this romance of the conscious and subconscious is there than is told in the Song of Solomon? By night on my bed, I sought him whom my soul loveth. Chapter 3, verse 1. I found him whom my soul loveth. I held him, and I not let him go, until I had brought him into my mother's house and into the chamber of her that conceived me. Chapter 3, verse 4. Preparing to sleep. Preparing to sleep, you feel yourself into the state of the answered wish and then relax into unconsciousness. Your realized wish is he whom you seek. By night on your bed, you seek the feeling of the wish fulfilled that you may take it with you into the chamber of her that conceived you, into sleep or the subconscious which gave you form that this wish also may be given expression. This is the way to discover and conduct your wishes into the subconscious. Feel yourself in the state of the realized wish and quietly drop off to sleep. Night after night, you should assume the feeling of being, having, and witnessing that which you seek to be, possess, and see manifested in your world. Never go to sleep feeling discouraged or dissatisfied. Never sleep in the consciousness of failure. Your subconscious, whose natural state is sleep, sees you as you believe yourself to be. Your subconscious, whose natural state is sleep, sees you as you believe yourself to be, and whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, the subconscious will faithfully create and embody that belief. As you feel, so do you impress her. And she, the perfect lover, gives form to these impressions and outpictures and creates them as the children of her beloved. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 7. This is the attitude of mind to adopt before dropping off to sleep. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. And you can do this by disregarding appearances and feel that things are as you wish them to be. For he calleth things that are not seen as though they were, and the unseen becomes seen. Romans chapter 4 verse 17. To assume the feeling of satisfaction is to call conditions into being which will mirror that satisfaction. Signs follow, they do not proceed. Proof that you are will follow the consciousness that you are. It will not precede it. You are an eternal dreamer dreaming non-eternal dreams. Your dreams take form as you assume the feeling of their reality. Do not limit yourself to the past because you have the opportunity to change those things with revision, even using affirmations. Use revision. Go back to the past if you know where you're going and what this the belief that you have of others in your world, you can always go back and change it or change yourself, forgive yourself, revise it. Revision results in repeal and forgiveness. So when you when you revise a scene, that is the equivalent to forgiveness for forgiving yourself for doing something. Revise it, do it differently this time, and you'll be instantly healed from that. So do not limit yourself to the past. Knowing that nothing is impossible to consciousness, Begin to imagine states beyond the experiences of the past. Whatever the mind of man can imagine, man can realize. All objective or visible states were first invisible states or subjective. 
and you call them into visible by assuming the feeling of their reality. So it's kind of like another example is this seeing your goal being finished. Like whatever you're trying to create in your world, you can do this and train your mind to do it. Always see the end. Like if you have a goal where you want to, you want to make $10 million this year and you know like exactly what is the, what the end is going to look like and what you have to create and what's going to be surrounded by that creation. You can go past all that and look in the end and feel it and create that scene. And then as you take that feeling and assuming that you already have that, you'll, you'll be in alignment. You'll now be connected in that frequency or that feeling state and you'll be led to it like once you're in alignment, you're going to be taking action, but it's going to be effortless action. And you'll find that you'll just start doing things. You start creating, you'll start doing this, you'll start, you know, doing that. And people start coming to you, talking about it, opening doors, allowing you to get in, doing all these different things that lead you to that event. But you train your mind to do this during the day as well. You can do this during the day as well by training your mind to always see the end result in everything that you're doing all day long, no matter what it is, something big or small, doesn't matter. You train your mind and always it'll, it'll automatically start doing this once you build momentum. You'll start seeing everything in the end, boom, the end. Everything you do, boom, the end, the end, the end. And then you find yourself in alignment in everything you do. You're able to accomplish all these tasks because your mind is now trained to live in the end all the time. So it's not always gonna be a battle with forcing yourself to to live in the end you once you build enough momentum and you start doing this automatically like riding a bike you know you start you ride the bike every day after a couple of weeks you got it you know you can just jump on the bike and you you ride you know down the street when you're a kid and you don't even remember riding there because it's automatic at that point it'll become you build the momentum and then it becomes automatic and you can do that with your mind you know, when you start start seeing the end result in everything that you do you build that momentum and then it automatically takes place in your world so kind of like it says right here the creative process is first imagining picturing it picture your goal being completed and then believing the state imagined once you're living in the end you train your mind to live in that end scene and that the goal is finished then you're tricking the subconscious mind to believe that you're now in that state of it being finished and you're believing in that state in with that goal being completed and you always imagine and expect the best. Of course, you always imagine and expect the best for everything and, and train your mind to think in that positive way. And that's what positive thinking is. And this is really good right here. The world cannot change until you change your conception of it. So what is your conception of your world right now? So that is the world that you're living in. Like what he says before, you know, what you believe and consent to be true of yourself and others in your world is your environment so that is your world and how do you feel about that world that you that you believe to be true you know do you want that you can change that because that's what your conception of your world is so that's what it's going to be like that's what you're creating as within so without right here it says it okay so nations as well as people are only what you believe them to be Right, he goes back into this. I like this. Okay, so no matter what the problem is, no matter where it is, no matter whom it concerns, you have no one to change but yourself. And you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about the change within yourself. You have nothing to do but convince yourself of the truth of that which you desire to see manifested. I love this because this is true. All you have to do is go within and change your beliefs and what your conception is of your world and yourself, and that will change your, your outside world. That's all you need to do. So you have no one to change but yourself, and you have neither opponent nor helper in bringing about the change within yourself. You have to do the work yourself. Fall asleep with a different version of yourself. Believe that you're living in a different world. If you don't like the way your world is, create a new one in your imagination or with an affirmation or a script it. Create a new feeling, whatever, whatever works best for you. Create that new feeling state and keep doing it. Persist in that night after night, night after night, till you start seeing changes in your world. As soon as you succeed in convincing yourself of the reality of the state sought, results follow to confirm your fixed belief. You never suggest to another the state which you desire to see him express so you never tell somebody like if there's a, if there's a, someone that's that's being cruel to you in your world you don't go tell them they're being cruel you need to change you don't you don't do that because 
it's an expression from inside of you that you've impressed and attracted that person into your world. So once you change that, that person will no longer be in alignment with you in your world anymore. They will no, they will no longer be there. They'll go somewhere else. They'll be around someone else that has those beliefs that you no longer have now. So you can get rid of these people in your life that are hurting you, you know, by changing with yourself within. You don't tell them that they're making mistakes and they need to change. You just need to change yourself within and then you'll shift to a different reality where that they can't even enter that world anymore. Or you can do this right here, what Neville Goddard says, or instead you convince yourself that this person is already that which you desire them to be. So if you want to see that change within them, start, start seeing that mental picture in your mind of this person being, you know, somebody different, that'll either change that person internally from you projecting, you know, a new version of that person express or the subconscious mind expressing a new version of that person because of your fixed beliefs that have changed. Or it'll get rid of that person and you have someone else come into your world that is in, in alignment with your beliefs now when you change all of this. And realization of your wish is accomplished by assuming the feeling of the wish fulfilled. You cannot fail unless you fail to convince yourself of the reality of your wish. A change of belief is, is confirmed by a change of expression from the subconscious mind. Every night, as you drop off to sleep, feel satisfied and spotless. For your subjective lover always forms the objective world in the image and likeness of your conception of it, the conception defined by your feeling. Okay, so your world is expressed by the subconscious mind by your conception of it. And you can change that by dropping off to sleep every night, feeling satisfied and spotless. For your subjective lover always forms that objective world that you feel to be true as you drift to sleep. Okay, so the waking two thirds of your life on earth ever cooperates or bears witness to your subconscious impressions. The actions and events of the day are effects. They are not causes. Free will is only freedom of choice. So take control of the choices that you make when it's based on your beliefs of your world and how you can change that. Make the choice of looking at your world differently and changing your thoughts, changing you know this idea that everything is fixed and you have to fix it from the 3D reality on the outside. But really, you got to go inside to change this. And it's all, it's all based on what you're falling asleep with. So make that choice. To, to, to capture a feeling state as you're drifting to sleep and persist in this night after night and change your world from within because that's the only way you're going to change the world on the outside is by what you fall asleep with, by, by changing your world and your beliefs of that and imagining your wish fulfilled as you go to sleep at night. What world do you want to be living in? Who do you want to be? And live in that world and be that person as you're drifting to sleep. You may not get it the first night, but do it night after night. Keep doing it. Keep practicing. Keep doing it every single night. Practice it just maybe for 10, 15 minutes, even five minutes if, you, if that's all you have. But work on it. Do it night after night. Start falling asleep in the world you want to live in and being the person that you want to be and having the things that you want to have. And what would that feel like? And then fall asleep with that. So choose ye this day whom ye will serve, Joshua. 2415 is your freedom to choose the kind of mood you assume. So you have that choice, you know, the, to choose the mood that you're going to fall asleep with. But the expression of the mood is the secret of the subconscious. So subconscious is what gives it form, your moods. You don't give your, you don't give your moods form. All you do is make the choice that you're going to feel this way as you fall asleep. And then the subconscious mind is then going to express that for you. So the subconscious receives impressions only through the feelings of man and in a way known only to itself gives these impressions form, form and expression. The actions of man are determined by his subconscious impressions. The actions of man are determined by his subconscious impressions. So what they're saying here, who are you when you fall asleep? Are you, you know, a successful, hardworking person with purpose? that is driven and fulfilled. And if you fall asleep with that, then your actions are gonna be based on that from the subconscious impressions that you just made. And that's really what free will is. Like you don't have 
any free will to act in your in the, the outside world, the 3D world. You only have free will to make a choice on a feeling state that you have and impressing that within the subconscious mind. And then the subconscious mind is then impressing you and putting you in alignment and changing the version of you to take action. So you can't just take action and, and change your personality without first going within yourself. You don't have free will to act in the 3D world without first impressing the subconscious mind with the new version of yourself and then that is expressed into the 3d world and that's what this whole free will thing is about is you don't have free will to act in the 3d world without first making an impression on the subconscious mind and then that being expressed and then creating a new version of you and then you're acting automatically at that point in your 3d world to be that person that you impress the subconscious mind with so that's the only free will that you actually have. And that's what Neville Goddard gets into right here. So his illusion of free will, his belief in freedom of action is but ignorance of the causes which make him act. He thinks himself free because he has forgotten the link between himself and the event. So you're not going to really remember things. You know, you're, you're going to be you're going to be acting automatically. You're going to be acting automatically once you once you create a new feeling state of a new identity, a new personality, and then you fall asleep with that with the subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is going to express that and into you and change the version of you that you fell asleep with. So you're going to be like a different person. If you persist in this overnight, you're automatically going to be this person that's fulfilled, driven, and making all this money, having great relationships because that's the person you, you fell asleep with. But it's but you don't have free will to go get all those things without first going within yourself and changing that and then and then impressing that with the subconscious mind. And then it all becomes automatic after that, because once you're impressed, you're in alignment with that. And that's just your being. So you're not going to feel any you're not going to feel like super excited about it. This is going to be your natural state of acting automatically. This is going to be a normal state to have good relationships to be making you know $100,000 a month, to be doing these things, all these things, it's gonna be a natural state to you because you made the choice of free will by changing your internal dialogue and changing your moods as you were falling asleep and creating this new version of yourself and then that being expressed in your 3D world. And it's kind of like what Neville Goddard says right here, I love this, man awake is under compulsion to express his subconscious impressions. So you will be in alignment and you'll be forced to do it, but it'll be effortless. It'll be a natural state to you, but you'll be under compulsion to express that new version of yourself that you have impressed to the subconscious mind. And then you'll wake up one day, you know, once, you, once you've done it properly, and you'll just be acting under compulsion. And it'll be automatic. You'll be, it'll be effortless. It'll be you. It'll be your being. And you'll just be... You know this new version of you and you won't even remember how it all happened you'll look back and you won't even you'll wonder who you were before you just think that you were a sleepwalker when you look back and look at yourself before that you'd be like oh i was just a sleepwalker but now i'm awake you know so you'll be under compulsion to express the subconscious impression so if in the past he unwisely impressed himself then let him begin to change his thought and feeling so it doesn't matter if you've if you're in a bad state right now, all that means is that you have unwisely impressed yourself upon the subconscious mind with a lower form version of your, of your, of your true self. So you can change that at any point by changing your moods, changing your thoughts, changing your feelings and impressing that. So for only as he does, so will he change his world. You can only change your world this way because you have no other free will to act, but change your feeling states and your thoughts. So do not waste one moment in regret for to think feelingly or of the mistakes of the past is to reinfect yourself. Let the dead bury the dead, Matthew 8, 22, Luke 9, 60. Turn from appearances and assume the feeling that would be yours were you already the one you wish to be. So disregard your 3D world. Disregard appearances and assume the feeling that everything went perfectly for you all the time. So if something goes wrong in your life, Disregard that, you know, know that it's not real because the 3D world is just artificial. It's a hologram. So if you see something that you don't like, don't be inwardly affected by that because then you're just recreating that for the future. Change it, you know, be like, just look at it for what it is when it happens to you in the 3D world. This is just a hologram. You know, that this is something that I wrote and produced yesterday because I didn't fall asleep in the right feeling state. So this is why this was created. I'm not reacting. I'm not becoming emotionally charged about it, but it's something I'm going to fix tonight when I go to sleep. 
So look at it that way. Disregard, you know, turn from appearances and assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in the, you know, the one that you wish to be. All right. So feeling a state produces that state. So feeling a state produces that state. The part you play on the world stage is determined by your conception of yourself. The part you play on the world's stage in the world, the part you play, the person you are, the life you're living on, in, on this planet, on planet Earth, is determined by your conception of yourself. So by feeling your wish fulfilled and quietly relaxing into sleep, you cast yourself into a star role to be played on Earth tomorrow. And while asleep, you are rehearsed and instructed in your part. So essentially what Neville Goddard is saying here and what's going to happen when you impress a subconscious mind with a new version of yourself or something you want to do, be or have, or your world has just changed. What's going to happen is the subconscious mind, when it feels that, is going to rehearse and instruct you in that part. So it's going to download the information into your mind and you're going to know exactly what to do the next day or whenever it's fully you know, expressed inside of you when you haven't done a full impression into the subconscious mind. It's going to download all this new information in your mind. You have all these new abilities or whatever you have to go through in your 3D world. It's going to send you through different experiences in your 3D world. It's going to send you or it's going to program you to do certain things or go through certain trials and tribulations or it's going to download all this new information where you're going to be able to just do all these things and create you know, that life that you have visualized, that you felt when you impressed it. So whatever you're creating, that's going to be downloaded inside of you, inside, in your mind. The subconscious mind is going to download a new version inside your brain, basically, and then you're going to know exactly what to do. And you're going to, have, you're going to go through certain things that maybe have to build you up in order to get there to be, because if you fall asleep making, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a month, but now you're making, you know, $2,000 a month, you may have to go through some things and learn some other things and then go through these trials and tribulations and go through some failures in order to develop yourself in order to be that person. So it may be something you have to go through, you know, but the subconscious mind is going to make that happen. So whatever, so be careful what you impress the subconscious mind with, because sometimes you'll have to go through a lot to get there, but you're going to get there. It's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. Absolutely going to happen. Once you impress the subconscious mind with something, you know, whatever feeling that is, I've, and you fall asleep as if it's already done, you're going to go there. It's going to send you exactly on that path to whatever needs to happen in order for you to get there. But you're going to get there. It's going to happen. All right. So the acceptance of the end automatically wills the means of realization. Make no mistake about this. If as you prepare for sleep, you do not consciously feel yourself into the state of the answered wish, then you will take with you into the chamber of her who conceived you the sum total of the reactions and feelings of the waking day. And while asleep, you will be instructed in the manner in which they will be expressed tomorrow. You will rise believing that you are a free agent, not realizing that every action and event of the day is predetermined by your concept of yourself as you fell asleep. Your only freedom, then, is your freedom of reaction. You are free to choose how you feel and react to the day's drama. But the drama, the actions, events, and circumstances of the day have already been determined. So they've already been determined by what you're falling asleep with and impressing the subconscious mind with. You don't have that freedom of choice anymore. The only thing you have freedom of choice over is what you react to, the events that you encounter throughout the day. But the day before, when you fell asleep, is when you're writing and producing the movie for tomorrow. Your world tom tomorrow is being produced, written today. So if something happens tomorrow, you have the choice of reacting or not reacting, but you don't have any other choice to change the events that are going to happen besides what you fell asleep with the night before. So unless you consciously and purposely define the attitude of mind with which you go to sleep, you unconsciously go to sleep in the composite attitude of mind made up of all the feelings and reactions of the day. Every reaction makes a subconscious impression and unless counteracted, by an opposite and more dominant feeling is the cause of future action. So the more you react to negative things in your life, the more that's going to cause future action by you that's going to create more 
of the same negative things to come back into your life. Those things that you're reacting to and become emotionally charged about in those events today are being recreated tomorrow because you're rehearsing yourself today with the subconscious mind for tomorrow. So don't react to those things. Don't become emotionally charged about anything you don't want to be recreated in your world. So if something comes into your world that you absolutely hate or don't like, don't become upset about it. Don't react to that. Don't become emotionally charged about that unless you want that to happen tomorrow again. So if something happens in your life you don't like, you could stop it right now by not reacting to it. But you're, fix your mind on something else. Find a solution for it. You know, look at it in a completely different manner. Change your perception of it you know, for growth or, some, or focus your attention on something completely different. And just, or focus in your mind. Say, okay, this happened today. So I wrote this script yesterday for what's happening to me now. This event's happening to me now because I wrote the script yesterday. So tonight I'm going to fall asleep and I'm going to change it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to make sure that I do this right tonight. And then that's what you're focused on when something negative happens to you. Instead of reacting emotionally charged like, oh, this person did this to me. If that happened and I'm upset about this, I can't believe that bill came in. Da -da, whatever it is. You wrote that script yesterday, so don't blame anyone but yourself. And You have to go within yourself to change it and know that. Impress the subconscious mind again. Try again. That's all that means. And you will get it. Ideas enveloped in feeling are creative actions. Use your divine right wisely. Through your ability to think and feel, you have dominion over all creation. Through your ability to think and feel, you have dominion over all creation. So you have the ability to observe your thoughts, to see them, to watch your brain and know that you are not your thoughts and you are not your brain. So you have that ability that most that animals don't have. Animals don't have this ability to look at themselves outside and see their thoughts and say, wait a minute, that's I can change that. That's not me. Okay, my brain is not me. My thoughts are not me. So I can change that. I don't have to feel that way about this. I don't have to do that. I can change my feeling states. I can do this. And you can think outside of yourself and wake up. Animals don't have that. So you have dominion over all creation. And it was designed that way. So while you are awake, you are a gardener selecting seed for your garden. But except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it biteth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. John 12, 24. Your conception of yourself as you fall asleep is the seed you drop into the ground of the subconscious. Dropping off to sleep feeling satisfied and happy compels conditions and events to appear in your world which confirm these attitudes of mind. So your conception of yourself as you fall asleep is the seed you drop into the ground of the subconscious. So you need to fall asleep feeling satisfied and happy. And this will cause conditions and events to appear in your world, which confirm those attitudes of mind, which are happy and satisfied. Everyone wants to feel happy and satisfied. So whatever feeling that you want to, you want to habitually feel during the day and those events in your life that you want to happen, find that feeling before you go to sleep, which would be satisfied, happy, abundant, prosperous, all these things, loved, create that feeling. How would you feel if you were loved right now? Completely loved, happy, satisfied, content, um, abundant, prosperous. What's that feeling? What's that feel like? Fall asleep with it. Sleep is the door into heaven. What you take in as a feeling, you bring out as a condition, action, or object in space. So sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So what you take into the feeling, you bring out as a condition, action, or so you're writing that script. So sleep in the feeling of the wish fulfilled, and you're writing a, a, a great script for tomorrow, for your movie tomorrow. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into chapter three, Feeling is a Secret by Neville Goddard. This chapter is titled Prayer. Prayer like sleep is also an entrance into the subconscious for manifestations when you pray enter into your closet and when you have shut your door pray to your father which is in secret and your father which is in secret shall reward you openly matthew 6 chapter 6 verse 6 prayer is an illusion of sleep which diminishes the impression of the outer world and renders the mind more receptive to suggestion from within. The mind in prayer is in a state of relaxation and receptivity akin to the feeling attained just before dropping off to sleep. 
So what prayer is doing is basically it's a, it's a meditative state where your outside world starts to disappear. You start to go within yourself and create your own world from within your own imagination, within your own feeling states. By disconnecting yourself from the 3D world, you're shutting your 3D world off and you're going within yourself and creating your own world and your own feelings. That way you can manifest that and imp impress, have a, have an easier time impressing the subconscious mind with a new feeling state or already having, doing, or being something that you want to accomplish or something you want to manifest into your world. This is a much easier way to do that when you can disconnect yourself from the 3D world and go within and forget all about your 3D world. Disconnect completely, go within and create a feeling state through visualization, affirmations, or anything like this, whatever works better for you. So prayer is not so much what you ask for as how you prepare for its reception. Whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that you have received them and ye shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. So what the Bible was telling us, it was giving us clues on how to manifest and create anything you want in your world. Whatever you desire, whatever you want, believe right now that you've already received them, that you already have them, and then you shall have them. It's giving us clues all out, all through the Bible. All through the Bible is giving us clues how to use the law of assumption, how to manifest things into your world by taking in that frequency, that vibration, or that feeling state that you have already received the things that you want in life. You have already received them, and what would you feel like had you already received those things? And that's what you do when you go into prayer. You don't go into prayer asking God or asking the universe or asking the subconscious mind for something that you want, because that is not what the, the instructions are in the Bible for us. You have to, whatever you want, whatever you desire, you must go into prayer as if you have already received those things, and then you shall have them. Mark eleven twenty four. It's written out for us in the Bible. These clues are there. Do not ask. You assume the feeling or the frequency or the vibration that you already have these things. And you go into prayer, you go into the drift, and then you impress the subconscious mind with that feeling that you already have these things. And then when you impress the subconscious mind with that feeling, then the subconscious mind is going to express that impression that you gave it into your world. It's going to shift realities. It's going gonna, it's gonna to turn you into the version of yourself that you need to be in order to get those things, or it's going to open up a lots of different doors for other people to come give it to you. But either way, you're going to get it, whether you change yourself, whether you go through failures, whether you go through trials and tribulations in order to develop yourself, in order to get those things, or you have other things, other doors open for you if you already have that conception of yourself where you're disciplined and you're ready for this amount of money or whatever it is that you're trying to receive. Okay, so once you impress the subconscious mind with already having something, you're going to get it. If you, do, if you land it right during prayer and all of these clues are laid out for us in the Bible. All right, so the only condition required is that you believe that your prayers are already realized. All right, so I'm going to break this down very, very clearly because what Neville Goddard says here is very important and it's very simple, but I'm going to make this even more simple to understand, okay, because this is the only condition required for you to manifest anything that you want into your world. The only condition is that you believe right now that you already have those things, that those prayers, your prayers, the things that you want are already realized, that you already have them. That is the only condition required to pray successfully. That's it. The only condition is that you already believe, that you believe right now that you already have those things. That's it. That is it. So your prayer must be answered if you assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your objective. The moment you accept the wish as an accomplished fact, the subconscious mind finds the means for its realization. To pray successfully, then, you must yield to the wish, that is, feel the wish fulfilled. So, yield to the wish. And this is a big part of prayer right here, is yielding to the wish. And that's why you're supposed to go into this meditation, this meditative state 
or prayer and disconnect yourself from your 3D world because then you can connect with it and then you can just think about it. You can think about you know, what it would feel like had you already had these things because you're disconnected from the 3D world. You're now in your own world, living in your own world, disconnected from everything, knowing that anything is possible to you. Anything is possible to you in this state, in this meditative state where you're disconnected from your 3D world. And then you're yielding to it. You're just accepting it as an accomplished fact right now. And how would that feel? And you're, you're doing this in an effortless way because you're just connecting with it and you're having a good time doing this. You know, don't force it. You're yielding to the wish as an accomplished fact. All right. So the perfectly disciplined person is always in tune with the wish as an accomplished fact. And this comes down to how well, how disciplined is your focus? How disciplined is your focus and developed? How developed is your the muscle of your mind? Like doing the leaf exercise doing the reverse exercise that Neville Goddard points out in the power of awareness. If you can do those things, you practice those, that develops that part of the mind where you are where you can easily be perfectly disciplined and always be in tune with your wish as an accomplished fact, no matter what's happening in your 3D world. That's contradicting that. These are the type of things when you have that muscle of the mind where you can stay focused on this one thing, which is the feeling of your wish fulfilled, no matter what's going on around you, the distractions in your world, you're able to focus on this feeling with laser-like focus because the muscle of your mind is so developed. Because when you do the leaf exercise, you're counting the leaves. You're not letting your mind be distracted or running off somewhere else. You bring it back. You're bringing it back 70 times 7. 70 times 7, you bring your mind back to that leaf over and over and over and over. And then that trains your mind to then stick and focus on the wish fulfilled. Once you find that wish fulfilled, you find that feeling of it, you capture that feeling and you focus your attention on that and what it looks like, what that would look like, what would that feel like? And then you then you hold on to that with your attention as a perfectly dis- disciplined mind, always in tune with the wish as an accomplished fact. And also the perfectly disciplined person knows that consciousness is the one and only reality and that consciousness is an illusion, that it's a hologram, it's a high-tech simulated game that's projected from inside of you out to the screen of space. So it's basically just a movie that it's not real. It's not a real world. So the perfectly disciplined person studies this. And they remember that. They know that. So when they go through their day and they deal with interactions throughout their day, they know that this world isn't real. And the only thing that's real is holding on to the feeling of already having the thing that you want. That is your ma- That should be your main focus if you are perfectly disciplined and know that consciousness is the one and only reality and that ideas and feelings are facts of consciousness and are as real as objects in space. Therefore, the perfectly disciplined person never entertains a feeling which does not contribute to his or her happiness, for feelings are the causes of the actions and the circumstances of his or her life. On the other hand, the undisciplined mind or the undisciplined person finds it difficult to believe that which is denied by the senses and usually accepts or rejects solely on the appearances of the senses. So the undisciplined person is reacting to the 3D world and thinks the 3D world is real. And they think that those are the causes that create their life, that the 3D world is actually creating everything and that's a real world, but really it's not. But the undisciplined person does not understand this and accepts or rejects solely on the appearances of the senses. Because of this tendency to rely on the evidence of the senses, it is necessary to shut them out before starting to pray. And that's why it's so important to go to meditation, do this before you go to sleep, and totally disconnect from your 3D world as you're using your imagination and create these feeling states or frequencies or vibrations. It's very important to do this because then you can shut out the 3D world and then create your own world within because that's the real world is within you. And then you create this. And this is a disciplined mind. A disciplined mind knows that the, the outside world, the 3D world is a hologram and that the real world is within you in your imagination. 
And whenever you are in a state of mind of, I should like to, but I cannot, the harder you try, the less you are able to yield to the wish. So whenever you are in the state of, I should like to, but I cannot, I can't just believe this, I don't believe that the 3D world's a hologram, I don't believe this, I don't believe my imagination create reality, then the harder you try, the less you are able to yield to the wish. You never attract that which you want, but you always attract that which you are conscious of being, and that is your conception of yourself, your identity. So you never attract that which you want, because then you go back to this asking. Then you're asking God for something. You're asking the subconscious mind or you're asking the universe for something. And that's not what we were instructed to do from the Bible. The Bible instructed us to assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled and believe that we already have it. And then we go into prayer this way and then it is given to us. You never attract that which you want, but you always attract that which you are conscious of being. So. Prayer is the art of assuming the feeling of being and having that which you want. That is, that is the art of prayer. It is assuming the feeling of being or having or believing that you already have everything that you want. So if you go into prayer, you go into your meditation, you go into your prayer and you're wanting and you're asking for something and you, you're not in the state of already having it, this is what's going to happen right here. Okay, so when the senses confirm the absence of your wish... All conscious effort to counteract this suggestion is futile and tends to intensify the suggestion. So this, your, the subconscious mind or God is going to create obstacles. It's going to intensify that suggestion of the absence of the thing that you want. So it's going to push it away even further because you're, you're not connected with it. You don't have the belief that you already have it. You're not in the feeling that you already have it. And then you're trying to force it. And just like it was stated in the previous chapter that you cannot command the subconscious mind. You can't command God to give you something. You have to persuade the subconscious mind to give it to you. You cannot force and command the subconscious mind to give you something. You have to persuade it by acting as if and feeling as if you already have the thing. You already have what you want to do, be, or have already. And that's how you persuade the subconscious mind to do this. Just like Neville Goddard states right here, prayer is the art of yielding to the wish and not the forcing of the wish. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will be the victor every single time because feeling is the secret. Whenever your feeling is in conflict with your wish, feeling will be the victor every time. The dominant feeling invariably expresses itself. Prayer must be without effort. In attempting to fix an attitude of mind which is denied by the senses, effort is fatal because if you're using effort then you're not in the state of already having it because once you have it, you're no longer forcing anything. It's no longer, it's con you're connected to it now. You are it. You are the thing now. That, that is your identity. And another way to successfully yield to the wish as an accomplished fact is you must create a passive state, a kind of reverie or meditative reflection similar to the feeling which precedes sleep. In such a relaxed state, the mind is turned from the objective world and easily senses the reality of a subjective state. So you're in this state akin to sleep where you're half awake and half asleep, but you're still in control of the direction of your attention. Okay, so it is a state in which you are conscious and quite able to move or open your eyes, but have no desire to do so. An easy way to create this passive state is to relax in a comfortable chair or on a bed. If on a bed, lie flat on your back with your head on a level with your body. So get rid of the pillow. So lay flat on your back with your head on you know, level with your body. So no pillow. Close the eyes and imagine that you are sleepy. So you're imagining that you're sleepy to induce that state. So imagining that you are sleepy. So if you're not sleepy, imagine that you are sleepy. Feel, I am sleepy, so sleepy, so very sleepy. Even affirm that. I am sleepy, so sleepy, so very sleepy. So I just got sleepy when I just did that just now. So if you affirm this, you are going to create that sleepy state. Or you can just imagine it like or visualize that while you're affirming it. Okay, so. And in a little while, a faraway feeling accompanied by a general lassitude and loss of desire to move envelops you. You feel 
a pleasant, comfortable rest and not inclined to alter your position, although under other circumstances you would not be at all comfortable. When this passive state is reached, imagine that you have realized your wish. So when you come and get into this state where you're half asleep, half awake, but you're still in control of the direction of your attention, that is when you have reached this passive state. And then you can imagine then that you have realized your wish because now you're completely disconnected from your 3D world. But this state isn't exactly required to manifest anything. This is just, this is a state akin to sleep, which is very difficult to do. This took me so much practice to master this. This took me years of, of, of doing this over, this exercise over and over. And it, it took me so long to be able to get in this state where I'm, where I'm not awake, but I'm not asleep, but I'm still in control of the direction of my attention. This took some really, really hard work for me to do. It may not be the same for everybody, but it was for me and it took a long time for me to master this. But now I'm able to do this, but, I, but this is not the only way to manifest because this is just a sure way to do it. This is the way that you completely disconnect from your 3D world and create a completely passive state where you are you can easily impress the subconscious mind with anything that you want to happen to you, anything you want to create into your world. So Neville Goddard possessed this power, okay? So he he may not ha have had to, you know, really had to master this and taken years for me able to do it. He doesn't talk about that, but this is a very difficult, at least for me it was, but it took me years to be able to master this technique right here to be able to get into the actual state akin to sleep, but it can be done, but you can manifest other things and anything that you want by just affirming or visualizing as you're going to sleep over and over and over because eventually you will, if you start visualizing in an odd position, eventually you will get into this state Anyway, so you can just start visualizing or you can start affirming as you're, you know, as you're just laying down and getting ready for sleep. And as you're doing that, you're going to take that that feeling into this passive state on its own. So you don't have to really create the passive state and then start visualizing within there, within that passive state. That's really difficult to do. But you can start visualizing before that and eventually you're going to pass through the drift and then you're going to impress the subconscious mind with that. Just keep doing the repetition with that and you will land that eventually. Okay, so, and then Neville Goddard explains what you do when you get into the state akin to sleep. So, when the passive state is reached, imagine that you have realized your wish. Now, or not how it was realized, but simply the wish fulfilled. Imagine in picture form what you desire to achieve in life, and then feel yourself as already, already achieved it. It's already done. Thoughts produce tiny little speech movements which may be heard in the passive state of prayer as pronouncements from without. However, this degree of passivity is not essential to the realization of your prayers. All that is necessary is to create a passive state and feel the wish fulfilled. So he's, he's admitting there that it's not the only way to manifest, okay? That's just one way you can do it, and if you can do that, you can create anything that you want. There's nothing that can that can stop you, and it's you can actually see results you know, very, very quickly in your world if you are able to master that and really get into the state akin to sleep in that passive state and then, and then create your wish fulfilled and create that feeling state. It will come into your world like absolutely 100% every single time. So, all right, so all you can possibly need or desire is already yours. You need no helper to give it to you. It is all yours right now. Call your desires into being by imagining and feeling your wish fulfilled. As the end is accepted, you become totally indifferent as to possible failure. For acceptance of the end wills the means to that end. So when you emerge from the moment of prayer, it is as though you were shown the happy and successful end of a play, although you were not shown how that how that end was achieved. So you're not going to see the sequence of events that leads up to it. You're just going to you're going to come out of this and you're going to feel that end, that successful end of the play. And you're, you're shown the, the successful end of that play, but not how it happened, just that the end of it. And this is also goes back to the, the shocking time sense and the positron. So when you go into this passive state, when you're, you're, you're half asleep, half awake, but you're still in control of the direction of your attention and you create this feeling and you're shown the end, you're shown the end, that's when you shock that positron which um, Richard Feynman won the Nobel Prize for. They actually uh, photographed it in the cosmos 
and you actually have so many of them in the in the brain at all times so many positrons so when you activate one of those in the future you're led to that seat so when you f actually feel that in this passive state you feel the end and you make that real in this passive state then you shock time sense and then everything in your world shifts like you there's this big shift and then you're led then there's going to be a sequence of events that are going to lead you right to that moment that you created in this passive state and that's how this works okay so however having witnessed the end regardless of any anticlimactic sequence you remain calm and secure in the knowledge that the end has been perfectly defined so that also goes back to the perfectly dis disciplined person. But when you're shown that end in this passive state, there's nothing that can that can sway you from from not believing that it's going to happen because that's part of it. That's part of this passive state and getting in the state akin to sleep and actually impressing the subconscious mind in this passive state. Like you are, you're completely calm. You're perfectly calm and secure that it's going to happen. There's nothing in your 3D world that can get that can sway you from that once you do this once you do that correctly but that, like i said before it's not necessary to manifest all right so let's go ahead and jump right into chapter four which is feeling this is neville goddard not by might nor by power but by my spirit saith the lord of hosts zachariah chapter four verse six get into the spirit of the state desired by assuming the feeling that would be yours were you already the one you want to be as you capture the feeling of the state sought you are relieved of all effort to make it so, for it is already so. So once you impress the subconscious mind, you're going to be in alignment with the with the action that you need to take in order to get what you want. You're going to be in that alignment, so it's going to feel effortless. But what Neville Goddard is talking about here is as you capture the feeling of your state sought, you are relieved of all effort to make it so is in your imaginal act or when you're affirming, when you're in the state akin to sleep and you're creating something you know to happen to you in the future you're you're making that future event now when you create that in that moment you're going to be relieved of all effort and that's the feeling that you need to have is what he's referring to here is you are when you create that feeling and make it real as if it's happening now then you're going to be relieved of all the effort during your imaginal act to make it so because it already is so and that's what he's saying right here okay so there is a definite feeling associated with every idea in the mind of man. Capture the feeling associated with your realized wish by assuming, by assuming the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of the thing you desire and your wish will objectify itself in your 3D world. Faith is feeling. Okay, so he's, he's correlating faith um, as the equivalent to feeling. So according to your faith or according to your feeling be it unto you matthew chapter 9 verse 29 so you never attract that which you want but you always attract that which you are so your conception of yourself whatever whatever identity you have assumed that is what you're going to get in life that's what you're going to be led to in your 3d world and manifest all those things that are in alignment with your identity or your concept of yourself, who are you? And that's what you will create. So as a man is, so does he see. To him that hath, it shall be, it shall be given. And to him that hath not, it shall be taken away. So in other words, you attract that which, you don't attract what you want. You attract who you are, who's your conception, what is your identity, and that's what you're going to be attracting. But that is from Matthew, chapter 13 verse 12 25 29 mark 4 25 luke 8 18 chapter 19 and verse 26 so that which you feel yourself to be you are and you are given that which you are so assume the feeling that would be yours were you already in possession of your wish and your wish must be realized so god created so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him and this is from Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 and 6. You are that which you believe yourself to be. So this is very important right here. Okay, so Philippians chapter 2, 5, 6 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also 
in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, Jesus Christ being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Okay, so that's where Neville gets into this other this, this next part here. So instead of believing in God or in Jesus, believe you are God or you are Jesus. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. John 14, 12. So basically what he's saying here is, if you assume that your identity or your conception of yourself is God or Jesus, then you will be able to do the works of Jesus or God. So if you're so basically what he's saying here is if you assume that your your identity is God or Jesus, then that will be impressed into the subconscious mind and you will be able to do the works equivalent to God or Jesus because he that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. And if you remember, Jesus found it not strange to do the works of God because he believed himself to be God. I and my father are one. John chapter 10, 30, I and my father are one is what Jesus said. So it is natural to do the works of the one you believe yourself to be. So it is natural. You're in that natural state once you have taken on a new identity or a new conception of yourself and impress the subconscious mind with that. It will be natural to do the works of your new conception or your new identity of yourself. So live in the feeling of being the one, the person that you want to be, and then you shall be that person. So when a man believes in the value of the advice given to him and applies it, he establishes within himself the reality of success. So essentially this chapter is about changing your concept of yourself, changing your identity to line up and be in alignment with the person that you want to be. And when you do that, you find what it would feel like to be that person. Then you impress that in the subconscious mind, no matter what it is, just like Jesus assumed that he was Christ or assumed that he was God. He and my father are one. So he became God and he was able to do the works of God. Like he was able to heal people, turn water or water into wine. He was able to do all of these things because he assumed that identity that he was God. So basically you can assume an identity impress the subconscious mind with this identity and be able to perform those acts of that identity that you have assumed. So get into the feeling and assume a new identity and connect with that identity and assume that you are this new person and then fall asleep with that feeling and then you'll impress the subconscious mind with this new identity. And those are the things that will be attracted to you in your 3D world. All right, guys, I love you. And that's the end of this video. And don't forget to be one thing you guys are grateful for or any content for future or any success stories. Leave that in the box below and I will see you guys in the next one.